So what do you think? Is this the beginning of? Is it a blow? What is this? So you know, if if if, it, if admission is the first step, there are 11 more steps. And the worry I have is I don't see the choreography that ends up with Donald Trump not being the Republican nominee as it has to go through an entire primary process. I mean, this man has called into question an entire general election. What's going to keep him from calling into question the outcomes of a primary that's in a party that's in his thrall. And so I don't know that I see that. I also think that for the country, Donald Trump will continue to be a hanging question over the head of the Republican Party and therefore our politics until he is soundly, clearly 100% beaten you know, by 10, 20 points. And I think if he does run and he is the nominee, that's likely what's going to happen. He is not a popular politician. You could see people running away from the stench of Trump in almost every single election that he put his finger in. Um, but the thing is, I, the, the one person who cannot see that, who needs to see that, is Donald Trump himself you and ran, a lot of other you people. Ran so I'll tell you ran for, you were once a candidate for governor of Michigan. You know what it's like to run for governor. What, what Ron DeSantis did in Florida was remarkable. Not only the spread, but who he got. Right. The, Latino, the Latinos on board uh, Miami-Dade. Do you think that it, he can repeat that across the country? Because that's the question. Was it just Florida? Or is it bigger? Are we getting ahead of ourselves on this whole discussion? <laughs> I just feel like it's... But that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, does he have the power to repeat that? What I think the, the, the DeSantis uh, playbook looks like is competent local technical leadership, mm -hmm. which can't take that away from him. He is competently led in terms of the fundamental basics of governing. And then a... A, a very good instinct for figuring out how to weaponize a culture war in a way that redounds to particular communities that he's trying to pick up. And so the way that he's played um, a sort of fear of change when it comes to schools, for example, I think has been important in his ability to make an argument uh, to a Latino community, for example, in Miami-Dade. The bigger question I think that means for Democrats is we've got to start asking big picture questions about why are we losing communities like this when we have been long advocates for the issues that should unite many different kinds of people mm -hmm. uh, around the bread and butter issues that we've always talked about. And I think that's as much a question for whether or not DeSantis can scale that brand to politics uh, and, and whether or not Democrats can address it. The last thing I want to say about this is that I worry a lot about where our country goes under DeSantis. I think a lot of folks think that the exit of Donald Trump means that all of a sudden the spell is broken. Mm -hmm. I actually see Ron DeSantis as a far more efficient version of what Donald Trump has done. And I worry a lot about the ways that it tells us that we ought to be tearing each other apart, that we cannot accept one another for who we are. Why does that make you laugh? I mean, yeah. I, I, this, is, this is so expected, like, you know, here's the Republican Party saying, well, maybe it's time to <clears throat> move on from Trump and... and my friend has come along to tell us, well, you know, DeSantis is much worse than Trump. And, and what can I, be what, true, though, what Scott. I, what, I predict, what I predict is going to happen is, and hey, the Democrats' tactics in this election, it paid off. They helped a bunch of uh, really bad Republican candidates get <laughs> nominations, and they defeated them. <clears throat> they, will, they will judge Trump as being the easiest person to defeat. So I expect a lot of punditry around, you know, everybody else is much worse than Trump. Maybe you should just nominate him one more time. We should not nominate him again. We so, do need a new nominee. We have to move on from this. If, if, if I may, I, I don't think that DeSantis is worse than Trump. I think he's more efficient at Trumpism than Trump is. Uh, I think Trump is caught into his own narcissism but in you, a way. you think that's better than DeSantis is. But the, the point that I'm trying to make is this. If we continue as a country to peddle in the politics of division, there is going to be a cost in the country that is bigger than who is an elected official in the country. And what I don't see, right, what I, what I don't see is... <clears throat> A conversation about whether or not this kind of politics that tells people that some people are less human than others, that don't deserve the same freedoms as others, whether or not that politics itself should continue to be a valid form of politicking on the Republican right. And I, this is the conversation I really wish y'all would have, whether it's Trump or DeSantis or anyone else. That's the conversation. Hi. Hey, friend. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and have more of your questions answered, click the subscribe button on this screen. And if you want to support me and want more content, I hope that you'll subscribe to The Incision, my newsletter. There, I reflect a bit further, go a bit deeper on some of these issues, and I interview some of the leading thinkers of this moment. The link to subscribe is on the screen here. See you soon.